Okay, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra. Um, also like to share with you that uh, this broadcast, you can find it on my uh, podcast, which is Zaratustra 5D. Uh, the topic of today is if this reality real, what is real and what is not? What is reality? And as usual, what we're going to do is uh, we will be doing uh, our uh, meditation. And this is going to be a simple meditation. So simply the best way to meditate and to quiet your mind and go beyond the mind, actually. You're not really quieting your mind because the mind's... Um, Function is to be thinking all the time and having thoughts passing through it. But what we do is we go beyond the mind. And the way we do this is you divert your attention inwards. You bring your attention towards the source of your thoughts. So simply look inside, trace your thoughts back to where they originate. Where do they come from? Take a deep breath, relax, and bring your attention inwards. Towards the source of your thoughts.
Just simply stay where you're at. Keep your attention on one point. Relax into the space you're in. Don't force anything. Simply you're here right now in meditation. Slowly, slowly come back, come back here. Okay, so, sometimes meditation comes easily. Sometimes it takes time for it to come. It's, you can't force meditation because meditation is really not an act. It's not like an exercise or um, yoga or playing tennis. Meditation is something that happens naturally. So you just have to be available for it, for the real meditation, for it to come. And you can't force it. So sometimes you just have to wait till meditation falls in. You may take the posture and the, the, the looks of it and try it, but it may not happen. But when you're available and you just simply trace back your thoughts, 
you get used to doing that, tracing back your thoughts and go back to the source of your thoughts where thoughts arise, then you come into this place of silence. Everything gets quiet. Um, regarding what is reality, there is, uh, there is two kinds of reality. There is the relative reality, the one that we're living in, and we're experiencing it right now, which in the relative reality, of course, everything looks very real, like the life that you're living in right now with all these ups and downs and its dramas. And there is the absolute reality. So we're gonna dive into it and take a look at it and dissect it and see what is real. The, if you come to this understanding that what is real is that which must be here all the time and that which is fueling off of its own light. It's using its own light and it's here all the time. That's what is real. Something that is not changing. So it's always here and it never changes. That is the absolute reality. That is the real thing. And everything else is a relative to that. Everything else comes and goes. Now, everything that you see in your life is changing all the time. It comes and goes. You can examine it, you can look at it from, you can look at yourself from childhood when you were whatever you remember. You were five years old, eight years old, 10 years old, and you remember your childhood. And now when you fast forward the tape, you can see you went to high school. I mean, you can see you went through a per period of puberty that you, you body change, your hormonal uh, hormones change, your desires change. Uh, you wanted to play with toys before you went through the puberty and then you wanted your agenda changed and you were interested in your, in boys and girls that maybe before you weren't interested in them. And then as you get older, you can just see how your body evolve and you become a young man or a young woman, you're 18, 19 years old. Um, you move on, you go to 25, you're at your prime, you can see you're strong, you feel good, you got a lot of energy, you're not afraid of things, you're not tainted by life. And you progress, you go forward. You know, you're in your 30s, you want to get married, you want to have kids, and then you just move on. But when you go back in time and you look at your progress, you remember and you know that you have gone through a series of different um, changes and you remember all of it or most of it. You can, you can see how you evolve. So something kept changing throughout. Physically, you changed and you remember it. Same way with your pattern of thoughts, the way you're thinking. You're not thinking the same way as you were thinking when you were eight years old, 10 years old. Your, your interests have changed. The issues that occupy your mind are different. Um, your, your, also your character has changed, your personality is formed. So nothing is the same as 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. A lot of things have changed. 
So you can observe the process of change. So physically, you see everything has changed for you. Um, mentally, you can see that, the way you think about things. Spiritually, you can see that there's been a natural progression of involvement that now maybe you're more interested in the world of the spirit. You're less interested in superficial stuff that maybe in the past you were interested in. Things, they're not occupying your mind about superficial stuff. Um, you're looking into a deeper meaning of life. You're asking questions. You're wondering where you came from. What is your origin? Where are you going to after here? So you can clearly see that there's been a, a progress of changing from something from the childhood, whatever, however you felt and thought and you viewed the life to where you're at now. And when you look back and you see that, that wow, well, it was very naive, it was innocent, it was beautiful, but so much things have changed and I feel and see things a lot differently today. So things are changing physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, but something is not changing. Something remains the same. Something is observing the change throughout all this time. There is something here which making a report, is reporting that I remember, I used to do this, I used to do that, I used to want this and wanted that. So you may say, well, it's me, it's my memory, but something very clearly is aware of everything that have changed all this time. <clears throat> so I want you to kind of look at this look back before I go forward. Just check this out throughout your life, how things have been progressing and changing for you. And you can see it with the economy of the world. You can see it with the politics. You've seen the economy going up and down. You can see that Politically, things have changed. You can observe that some countries that didn't exist, they're born, or countries that existed, they, they were lost. They became a part of another country. Then they separated. So you can see a lot of changes have happened in, in front of you. In absolute reality, none of them are real. When it's compared to that which is real, which is the state of I am, which is that which is here all the time, that which is aware of everything, that which knows, that which is present, that which doesn't change, is I am, that is here all the time. And that one is still here when you sleep at night and you don't dream. When you're sleeping and you're not dreaming, something, some mechanism, some presence is aware of you sleeping. That is the I am. 
and that one doesn't sleep and that one is not affected by awakening state of the body wakes up from sleeping. It's here all the time. That is the ultimate goal of the spiritual seeker because that's the one we want to discover and that's the one we want to connect with. And towards at one point for all spiritual seekers that they're really adamant and they're on the, on the path whether it's this life or another life, how much work they have to put into it, how many times they've been around the block. At one point, it comes the awareness and the attention that the attention starts to be turned and it gets forced to examine what's inside ourselves. It's a part of the spiritual awakening that it happens for anyone who has come to full, full awakening and as you're on the path to it. Now, what does that mean? When you wake up in the morning and you during the day, you can say that, oh, I had a good sleep. I slept well. Or you may say, I like to go to Zarathustra's academy. I like what he says. Or I don't like his academy. I would like to go to Spain. I want to go on a vacation to south of Spain. I like the water there. I like the people there. I like that tree. You see that tree out, outside of my house? I really like that tree. You see this car I bought? It's not really a good car. I don't really like it. The other day when you were telling me, talking to me, you said some things that it hurt my feelings. My feelings got hurt. Uh, you were a bit insulting the way you talk to me. So my husband, he is very kind to me. My boyfriend, he's very jealous. My kids are very good kids. They just do whatever I tell them to do and they don't tr trouble me. So when you, if you pay attention to this, is there's a subject here the subject is me, the I, I am, and there is an object. So if you pay attention very, very closely, you're going to see that most of your life, all, I would say all of your life, you're the subject and you're referring to all of your experiences as an object whether it's a person you like, it's something happened, you like that tree across the street from your house, so you, so you always say, I like this, I don't like that, I want to go travel, um, I'm really worried about what is happening in the world, so I'm really worried about the coronavirus, I'm really worried about what's gonna happen in the future, so there's always a subject, which is you, and there's an object that you are dealing with. Again, whether the object is your kids, your dog, your cat, your work, your feelings, your thoughts, your money, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. There's a you, which you refer to your, yourself as as me, the subject, and there is something related to you that you like or you don't like, or it goes your way or doesn't go away. Okay? So I just want to make sure we're clear about this part and you understand this because this is a very, very good subject 
I'm glad Hilda brought it up. And if you understand this, it really gonna shorten your spiritual career. And it's, if you really get this part, if this clicks for you, if it's meant to click for you, and you resonate with this, then you're gonna shave off years off of your spiritual quest. And you're not gonna run around and bounce around and bang your head against the wall from this place to the other place. And you will find directions. But again, you may get it, you may not get it. This may be time for you for this to click. Maybe it's not. Maybe this is like blah, 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 and it doesn't really resonate with you. And which is okay too. But this is the thing. We take all these different spiritual classes, practices, workshops, and most of them are about how you can manifest wealth in your life. Okay, so there's the subject is here, is trying to manifesting an object, okay? Then you take a series of other classes that how you can manifest love in your life, how you can attract your twin flame or your uh, soulmate. So again, the subject is you and you're trying to manifesting an object, whatever is the object of your desire, whatever that is, you're trying to get something. Then you're taking another course or you're working on something, how to clear your past issues with your, your traumas or whatever happened. So again, there's the subject, which is you, and now you're trying to clear and get over some of your trauma, the traumas that happened to you in your childhood. So those traumas and those events become the object. You're the subject, you're working on the object. You may be more creative and you're taking some courses to clear like your ancestral stuff from the past that has happened and now they're affecting your life today. So you may be working on that one. You may be learning <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you may be interested in uh, doing some channeling and being able to bring in messages from entities from uh, other dimensions or um, beings or people who died and then you want to contact them. So you're channeling or you're, you're a medium. So again, there is the subject which is you, is trying to connect and get information from the objects. Does this make sense so far? Do you, are you getting this? Yeah, is this like, so far I wanna make sure I'm clear about this part, that we have this part of it clear. So there is still a me, trying to get or do something to take care of me. And there's also this subject that I need to take care of myself. I need to make sure that my future is safe. I have enough, enough that uh, take care of my retirement. I need to make sure that I have enough food to eat. I need to make sure I'm safe. I need to make sure I don't get sick. I need to make sure that nothing bad happened to me. So there is still the subject, which is me, trying to taking care and dealing with different elements in life of, which are these different objects of basically taking care of myself. 
So nobody comes and challenge you and tell you or bring this question to you all of your life, all of your life that you live. You've never thought about maybe I need to examine the subject. Maybe I need to examine the existence of this me. This me that have observed myself growing up all of my life. I have all these memories. I have all these feelings. I have all these thoughts. I have all these friends, all these family. I live this my life. This me, maybe this me is not real. So we we don't question that. It doesn't even occur to us because why would you? All of your life, everyone else around us, including everything you're observing, everything you're touching, everything you're dealing with, is all geared into this relationship of the subject, which is you, and the object of what's being perceived, what's being felt, touched, smelled. That's what you grow up with from the time you remember. So you never question it. But here, what we're doing when I share with you, let's trace back your thoughts to the origin where your thoughts come from. Let's just go deep inside. Where do your thoughts come from? Is when you trace it back, is what happens is we are going to examine the validity of the subject, the validity of this person who is experiencing all these things and rightfully believes that it's happening to this person. Now we're going to examine that to see how real is that person. Is it real? Is, does it really exist? Are these things really happening to this person? Is, what about this person? Is this person real or not? Or is it a part of an imagination? How real is this person? And if you remember in the beginning, I mentioned that real is that which is always here. Real is that which doesn't change. Now, if this person here is changing based on what I shared before, then how real is that? Can it be real? Because this one, that I call it me, is changing all the time is changed all the time. So how real is this one? Now, the, this is where it becomes very interesting and uh, super interesting is to challenge the validity of the subject, of the one that is experiencing things, of the experiencer, is challenging that examining the roots of it to see how real it is. And those who are willing to try it and go into it, then they may find something very, very interesting, very something of value. Because you have to cut through a lot of the belief system, a lot of the concepts, a lot of the notions that have been implanted 
in our psyche from childhood, things that we believe they're real. And some of us in this life have seen that some of things that for years you really believed they were real, they just turn sour and they turn the other way around. And then at one point you start to see, wow, I thought this was real, but it's not. And the same thing with this idea of me. The idea of me, of someone here, separated from everything else. And because I have these feelings of being separated, I am this subject, and they're all I'm related to all these events, all these thoughts, emotions, people that I'm relating to. So those are the objects that we talked about. And so I have a very strong conviction that I am real. And therefore, those things are real. And these things are happening to me. And they're connected to me. They're affecting my existence. But if I go deep and turn my attention inwards and challenge this idea of myself, which I've never done it before, but now I'm seriously challenging it, I may discover that this person that I believe I am is not really real either. Neither as this world that I think it's really real. Neither of them exist. They exist in relative reality, but they don't exist in absolute reality. And their existence also are not separated from the observer of what is observing of whatever I'm observing, whatever I'm experiencing, is really not outside of myself. It's not happening outside of me. This is happening all within, in my own consciousness. But since I never examined myself, so I never had a reason to, to question any of it. But now that I'm going after me, I'm really going to question my own existence. I'm going to question the idea of myself. Then things starts to pop. Things become interesting. And one of the ways is that almost immediately you get a glimpse of it, of course, this is not something I discovered on my own. Um, this came to me through the grace of my teacher that my teacher directed me in this direction and pointed this out to me that I recognized it. Otherwise, I had no idea I was lost in the world and I really believe in the world that I'm seeing as if it's real because I wasn't ex examining the source of it till I went and examined the source of it to see how real is the source of it. But one way you can just very quickly get a glimpse of it is very simple, is what I try always to do and teach you and share with you at the academy. Turn your mind, turn your attention inwards and go inside and look for the source of your thoughts. Where do your thoughts come from? And as you go in there and you look for the source of your thoughts, your mind becomes absolutely quiet. You go beyond thoughts. 
and then you sink back inside yourself you sink back inside the i am the present and then all of a sudden everything is flat everything is absolutely becomes still because there's no movements it becomes still and it becomes quiet it's like a point everything becomes absolutely silent and then there is no world there is nothing to be afraid of there is no coronavirus there is no enemy there is nothing to come and get you because none of them exist outside of this place that you sink back in, in outside of the truth of who you are which is the i am the presence that which doesn't change it's always here from there a projection has happened and the world begins to appear and you also are a part of that <coughs> and everything becomes very real as your experience and frightening too or dramatic but when you go back and you challenge you challenge the subject you challenge your your this you who am i who is this me who is this person you're really challenging it by asking this question who am i who is this person who's experiencing this horror horror movie or this beautiful movie this life who's experiencing it and you go deep inside and you're challenging the experiencer and you go beyond the experiencer then there is no one experiencing anything it becomes all silent it becomes all quiet and you get a glimpse of what is real and you see the reality everything else is merely images it's just a film it's a movie that is happening and it's not real because it can't do anything to the truth of who you are it has no power no effect on the i am because i am is always here i am is always present and i am never changes and the true identity of who you are is the i am not who you think you are but this is something you have to discover it for yourself and the only way to do it is by really questioning questioning the truth of who you are and in that as you get closer you can see that an evolvement begins to happen and a lot of your fears and worries begin to disappear and your mind starts to become more quiet and you get more centered you're finding your own center the center of the self and you begin to identify to that then what is on the outside because you're questioning the subject and the objects what are on the outside and the dance they play and the things they do you start to see through them and they don't worry you they don't affect you and you also start to see that there are imagery projecting from the collective mind is projecting these things 
but they have no substance. There's nothing inside of it. They're hollow. That's what they are. And in comparison, in front of that which is real, that person who has come to that understanding that they have discovered the truth, the, the real, the absolute real, these hollow images have no power over them. They do their dance, they do their thing, but they, have, they can't touch it. Yet, in the meantime, we all have a script. It's like we've been handed this script of our lives, our destiny, and these characters in these movies, they have to live their life, and they have to play according to the script. Means I can't change my life to something else that is not. I have to play this out, even though you have to play yours out, even though awakening will, may happen, that you fully become realized that this whole thing is not real because you have discovered what is real. But in the meantime, you don't have any power to remove yourself out of it because you have to play the script because it's an image. The image needs to continue doing what it does. It means you have to live your destiny, whatever that is. There is nothing in this world to be afraid of. There is nothing in this world which is separated from you. There is nothing in this world that is not you. All of it is yourself. All of it is God. God is the only thing that exists. Is the only thing has ever existed. Everything you come across, you touch, you feel, you smell, you do is all the presence of God, all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, the disease, the death, the life, the birth, the good people, the bad people, all of it is God, all of it is you, all of it is the one. It's all happening in God's imagination. It's all happening. It's a projection of the one self projecting everything continuously. And you start looking at it that way. You start examining the source of yourself. You begin to see the truth of who you are and your fear and worries, everything starts to melt away because all of those fears, worries, concerns are coming from a sense of separation. It's coming from a notion that you're separated and that there is a you out there helpless, that something can happen to it. There's a you separated from everything. All is very well. Everything is in very good hands. Thank God. Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, 
she is orchestrating everything, everything. Everything you see is happening is her will. It's her dance, it's her show. That's what she's doing. She's playing in this drama of life. Recognize that and you lose your fears. Yet, you still have to live this life, but you're no longer afraid. Fear disappears. And at this time, more than ever before, for us, it's really important that we spend time, we stop our busy life, and we go in silence. The more you go back into silence, the more your attention goes inwards towards the source of your thoughts. The more you go beyond your thoughts, the more you're quiet. the more everything comes down around you and in your neighborhood. You will be emanating peace and calmness, starting from yourself. The more you're in silence, not activating your mind, not listening to all these news, not listening to all these blah, 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 the more you're calm and peaceful inside, the more you begin to see the truth of who you are, the more you come to your power, the more you recognize yourself, how mighty you are, how powerful you are, how huge you are, how big you are, that you're not insignificant. The truth of your totality starts to reveal itself. But that only happens from a silent, quiet mind. And we can see what's going on in the world. The minds are getting really busy. They're going crazy. They're in panic. It's because the mind are activated, agitated. In the midst of all this craziness, here's the Buddha. You are there, absolutely still, absolutely silent, not reacting to things while everyone else is running around and being going crazy. You're very still. This is another show of the Lila is playing another game, another show. You keep your attention on the truth of who you are. Now, I'm not saying you be reckless. You don't take care of yourself, not keeping yourself healthy or not storing some water or some food or running out there and just doing all kinds of crazy things. That's not what I'm saying. In the world, of course, you're being cautious, but you're not of the world. You don't buy the story. You remain in your meditation. That's where your salvation is. You stay in the center of yourself. If there is no busy mind, there is no problem. When the mind is chaotic, then there is problem. The problem is not in the world, my brothers and sisters. This new epidemic, epidemia, that's not the problem. We're trying to fix things in the world and they don't work. 
That's not where the source of your problems are. The source of your problems is your own mind. You have to go beyond the mind where it's silent. Once you come to silence, there is no problem. You're perfectly fine with yourself wherever you are. And that's the path to liberation. Examine the subject. Challenge this idea of me, me, me. Go check it out. This I, this me. Go examine it. See how real is this one. And the more you dive into it and lo look into it, because if you go beyond that, when you're doing it, Every time you come to the silence, every time every, everything gets very quiet inside you. It's an inside job, that's what it is. Don't try to fix things on the other world outside. Learn to be quiet. The Buddha is within yourself. Don't look for it anywhere else. Because the majority of the world is in ignorance. You can't ask them to bring you peace because they don't, they haven't found it inside themselves. They don't know where it is. The authorities, the government, people around, around you, they haven't found it inside themselves. You have, you, you have. So just bring your attention to that place and stay, spend more time now than before in meditation. Sit quietly still somewhere. Go in the nature, spend time by yourself. Stay in meditation. Thank you for being with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, this recording, we will, first of all, it's gonna be on Facebook. I wasn't able to do Instagram today, but this is, uh, I'm already recording it, so it'll be on my pages on Facebook. And the full recording is also going to be emailed to you, those of you who are connected with me through um, my system Zoom. And also it's going to be on my podcast, Zaratustra 5D. Look forward to connecting with you. God bless. Sending you lots of love and light. Namaste. Namaste.